Issue 254. We start out in Metropolis where we start out right away with at least someone who looks like Sonic showing up to waste time trying to convince Amy that he's innocent. Why the fuck would he bother with this? This is so stupid and John applied of him to do. I know he's stubborn, but still. Amy hits Sonic with electricity, and after Sonic says he doesn't want to give people any more reason to hate him by attacking her, Amy easily provokes him into creating a whirlwind around her. This is such an idiot plot. Why? Why would Sonic ever come back to Mobius after his reputation was ruined? Why would he bother... Well, may may maybe it is his home plan and he wants to defend it, but why would he bother talking to these people? He literally said, Nah, I'm never coming back to this planet again. Also, Sonic's using his random force field power they showed on Angel Island one time for Days Ex Machina. Sonic gets hit with a smoke bomb, a net is launched to him, and he breaks out right away. At least we finally learn how Amy got hurt by the fake Sonic. She got a concussion. Sonic says that he used to think Amy knew him better than anyone, even Grimer. But at the same time, he's glad she didn't get dragged into all this. And he's still not giving up on finding proof that he was framed. I guess it is in his character to never give up, but I was given every indication that he'd never come back to Mobius again when he told Tails he'd be the new hero of Mobius. This is so stupid of Sonic. Like, he was talking about how this was his mess and he created it and he has to do something about it. Why, did, why didn't he go to the Dracon Empire? Somehow, Sonic is delusional enough to think Annie was just testing him and isn't sure which side to take. Sonic says to Tails that with women you never know, checks out Johnny's statue making the excuse that he wants to make sure it wasn't vandalized, and Sonic says he thinks they've all grown up a little bit. And the story ends with what I can only assume is Tails calling Sonic Pixel Brain for a change. But we don't get to see Sonic's reaction because the story chooses now of all times to end. This, this story made no sense. Oh, that stupid pop-up! I'll read it when I've read everything else, damn it! Fortunately, clicking on Sonic's world directly still works. We see the effects that the war on Mobius from Eggman is having, with ratcheting, criminal infiltration of defense forces, and then it turns out Fabian Vane is back to singing. So why did they think I'd want to see a whole story dedicated to this guy again? After Amy is told in Metropolis that the Vane look is the new trend, as I'm wondering how Fabian got popular again in the first place, Amy gets Fabian to his next gig because apparently that's her job now. I think it's her justification that she doesn't want him to get killed by Eggman's assassins because he's singing against Eggman? Mina did this much better because she was a good singer, so it made sense that she was popular. Wouldn't literally every other singer be singing against Eggman anyways? Then Amy fights some badniks to cover Bane on the way to his concert, and then we see a mecha with Eggman's face on it shooting lasers at Fabian's concert stadium, wanting to get rid of the singer. He's cutting through the zone defense force, so they can't evacuate the stadium in time. If Fabian's lyrics are that horrible, then seriously, how does he have any fans in universe? That's not a joke that works because it makes no sense. The story ends with Amy somehow shooting Eggman's mecha so that he hears Fabian's MP3 files, which is a creative and really confusing way to defeat him. In the next story, at least Set explains how he survived. Techno failed to hit any of his internal organs in her blind rage. But still, he never went to the hospital. Shorty asks her why she didn't tell him, which is dumb since it should be obvious why a hero would feel too self-righteous and irrationally guilty to tell him that she killed someone. It should be obvious that she was worried he would judge her. Shorty attacks Set, saying that he ruined his life again. Again? I, th I guess he thinks the first time was the time he was framed as a villain. For some reason, Techno acts surprised when Shorty says she's not his girlfriend, when the only reason she'd ever think that is from Shorty kissing her a whole bunch and stuff. So if he hasn't been doing that, she'd have no reason to think that they were dating. Even if they were living together, it was just a friend thing. She throws something at Shorty apologizing, and this somehow forces Shorty to get into his armor, and I assume he was trapped in it because he acts betrayed. He fights Set, Techno gets the ring of eternity working. She defeats Set, and Shorty says that he made a life for himself in this dimension, more than he ever did back on Mobius, and he doesn't want to go back to his own world, 
which was foreshadowed by a text box implying that he's grown attached to a world without technology in his trading stall. Instead of respecting his decision, Techno presses a button making Jordy unable to move and drags him into the ring of eternity. This is another pragmatic good decision on her part, because yeah, Mobius should have him being a hero over there. He doesn't need him to be somewhere else. It's also really refreshing and fascinating to see Jordy and Techno having an argument for once. To go back to Emerald Hill Zone, the Ring of Eternity is destroyed without a proper explanation, and there's a good moment of silence. As Shorty stammers looking angry, Techno shuts a tear looking downcast, and he leaves sadly as Techno watches some airships shooting lasers, revealing that the place is in danger. The first story was by Jamie J, and was flat out an idiot plot and not to mention a waste of time because Sonic acted like a complete idiot by even trying to talk to Amy when she had been turned against him. I know that in the story arc Regman was all powerful and took over the world, Sonic showed that he's the type to never give up, so him returning to Mobius is in line with that. But he clearly said he'd never come back and he has no reason to talk to people who are against him. Grimer's in another dimension and the only way he could get any proof that he was framed as if he somehow came over to him with a way to record Grimer's talking about how he framed him, and got that recording over to everyone else without it being destroyed, which won't happen if he stays on Mobius. His only hope is to keep zone hopping until he finds the zone Grimer's in. Fleetway Sonic's supposed to be the smartest Sonic of them all, not a complete idiot. The second story by Charles Ellis also felt like a waste of time. Why would I want to see another story about Babby and Bane? It makes no sense that he'd get popular again when the whole joke is that he's a bad singer and songwriter. So the whole story falls apart, although it was creative how the villain was defeated. And the third story by Mike Corker is the only good one. As in a refreshing twist, Techno and Sharpies' friendship is strained and possibly broken at the end, because Techno is a pragmatic hero who knows his services are better off being used on Mobius. Though she doesn't even try to explain that, and instead looks very selfish to Shorty, who wanted to stay where he was. I don't buy that selfishness would be the only reason she'd be doing this to him when she's a hero. It's obviously more than just her being selfish because that'd be out of character. Also, I completely overlooked the fact that Techno had shot a laser through Seth's heart, finally ridding the world of him. Because aside from Shorty shouting no at it for no reason at all, it was such a subtle moment to just one panel that immediately Techno changes the subject awkwardly. I really don't buy that Sharpies wouldn't agree with Techno doing this, taking a more hardliner approach, because his name is Sharpies, and this is a guy who literally dedicated his entire life and goal to revenge. Revenge on Eggman, where all he cared about was wrecking his stuff and making him miserable like a thug. Why would he be the more morally standard hero lecturing Techno? When he's like the original anti-hero of Fleetway. When he told her to build a bomb to blow up an inhabited area in their first meeting. His name's Shorpius, it's in the name, he's got a short temper, he wouldn't be the type to be merciful and think what Techno's doing is wrong. Which was why that story where he just left instead of arresting or killing Eggman pissed me off so much. It was out of character for the major anti-hero, the Omega of the comic who is the same person who almost let Johnny die in favor of trying to get another fight with Vermin. Maybe living a peaceful life here changed him, but he doesn't say that. 